Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. Hey, lovers of small businesses and good stories in general. Welcome to episode 144 of Small Business War Stories. And today I sat down with Grace, who is the manager at Big Henry's Vinyl in Austin, Texas. It's a really, really cool record store. But before I tell you about about Grace, I want to share a really cool story, something that happened to me uh, this past week. A past guest of the podcast, uh, Jeff Bean from Helix Metalworks. It was episode 94, I believe, last year, uh, almost a year ago. It was, uh, it was like in late November of, of last year. Um, he, uh, because of the podcast, uh, was able to find a banker, somebody who would finance him to buy his own shop. He'd been uh, renting his own shop. It's a great uh, episode. You should go back and then listen to it. Um, but, uh, that really made my day because that is the reason, you know, creating a community, creating good results for people is the reason I do the show. So that was really, uh, really, really heartwarming and awesome. So Jeff Bean from Helix Metalworks, big shout out to you. Congratulations on, on your growth and your business. And I'm so glad that I was able to play a small part in making that happen. But, um, Grace is awesome. Grace is the manager, and she she does a lot of things. Actually, we talk, we touch a little bit upon uh, all the things that she does in Austin. But she helps run the vinyl shop that's right next to Antone's Records in downtown Austin. Uh, and we talk about music. Uh, we talk about uh, mental health and what it takes to manage your psychology when things are uh, you know not as good as it could be. And that's a a topic that we've covered in a few different shows. Uh, And and I think it's really important because it's something that people don't talk about a lot. But uh, yeah, I was really, really excited about about this show. And this episode is brought to you by your sponsor, Gusto. That's G-U-S-T-O. And just so you know, this episode, I mean, this show um, is made possible by sponsors like Gusto. So if you do need their, you know, services, things like payroll, benefits, and HR, uh, it really helps us and helps them if you go to gusto.com slash war stories. So that's my ask to you, and maybe you don't need it right away. Maybe you know somebody else who needs it. Uh, gusto.com slash war stories, W-A-R stories. And um, this is a great time to get set up with a new payroll provider for next year. Now, like you know, things are winding down for... 2019 you want to get the year started on the right foot go check out gusto without further ado let's get into today's episode with grace of big henry's vinyl in austin texas and we are live here in beautiful austin texas and today i have the pleasure and honor to sit down with grace ryer who is manager of a big henry's vinyl and gifts welcome to the show Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's uh, DJ Grace, right? That's your uh, call name. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I. I have a hard time seriously coming up with a nickname for myself when I DJ or do. Uh, I do live visuals for bands around town as well. And okay. I'm always billed as just Grace. Grace. <laughs> Grace. And you're like it's one name. Stuck. <laughs> yeah, you're like you like Cher, you could those Brazilian uh, uh, soccer players, just one name. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Done. <laughs> It's worked thus far. That, there you go. I love it. So yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about all the other things you do. Um, and uh, here we are upstairs at Anton's Nightclub. So Will Bridges has been a guest on the show very early on. He is the uh, proprietor of, of Anton's or, or co-owner with a, with a few other folks. Um, tell me a little bit more about Big Henry. So Big Henry's is... Uh, attached but separate from from uh, Antones and it's a uh, you know t- tell me more what what is what is Big Henry's yeah so I think actually will explain it to me in business terms as I've kind of grown in my role that uh, Antones is an LLC and Big Henry's is a DBA I believe um, but basically uh, we wanted to have our it initially it was a retail space but we wanted to be more than a gift shop we wanted it to be very intentional 
um, kind of capturing, you know, just aspects of what makes Antone's an institution in town. And, um, you know, so we went, I, I, the, he kind of developed this concept with, uh, you know, a lot of our, our major folks here, like uh, Zach Ernst and Noel Wagner, um, that they had this idea of this, you know, a record store attached to a music venue that has uh, this very curated collection of vinyl that captures the essence of 44 years of blues, you know, funk and soul music. Yeah. I can hold up albums and be like, this person played here, you know? And uh, it's got, uh, you know, for those of y'all listening who haven't had the pleasure of visiting, um, it's, you know, we've got a couch and we've got beers, we've got Antone's famous po' boy sandwiches and, you know, I always encourage people to, you know, escape the downtown hustle and bustle and listen to vinyl. Hang just out. come hang out. Yeah. And just to give some context to our audience, so Zach is the main uh, uh, booking person here mm-hmm. at Antones, right? And then yes. Noel does a lot of the uh, posters. He's a graphic artist, right? Yeah, I like to think of Noel as our taste maker. He's, wow, there you go. He's kind of a, you know, uh, he does a lot of work around town. It's just really beautiful, excellent Um very uh intentional you know i think he puts a lot of his heart and soul into whatever he does like everyone here yeah so let's talk about that because that that word intentional i think is really key to everything that's going on here because not only do you have a uh, an iconic music venue that's actually been in in several different physical locations but the Mm -hmm. legacy of uh of clifford anton antones you know continues on here in downtown austin but you also have this um you know, the, the, this record shop where you for basically music wise, you only sell uh, vinyl records for the most, like 99% of what you sell, right? Yes. So we do. There's no CDs, no, no anything CDs. else. CDs. Um, we got a couple of cassettes. We do, um, you know, we try to do a quarterly shop mixtape, uh, which is always fun. And, you know, we've had uh, the pleasure of, uh, you know, have featuring, we kind of try and get different people to work on them. Uh, Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top made our last one which was a lot of fun. Um, It's really an amazing way to connect with people in in a more personal way than you might normally. Yeah. Never in my wildest dreams would I be like, oh, Billy Gibbons, what's on your playlist, bro? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a high quality problem. So what, um, let's talk about this intentionality. So people come here and they really want to hear a record. And so it's not like, it's not the same thing as putting on a playlist or, a random, you know, internet radio station. It's like you are intentionally putting that particular record, right? Oh yes, I, I always say that it's my favorite part of the job. Is you know, someone comes in and they've got time to kill, but they're like, I don't really know much about this music. I, I would love to get involved, but it's overwhelming, you know, uh, and you know, to know where to start with, like most things. And you know, since our collection is very curated, it's approachable and I can be like, well, I love this record and I can tell them a bit about it and we can just really share this, you know, and, and see someone experience something for the first time that they're falling in love with is, is really special. Yeah. And how do you, so you have a pretty unique uh, collection of records, a lot of stuff that's actually pretty difficult to find elsewhere. It's not, I mean, you do have some new releases, mm-hmm. uh, but for the most part, I would say, I mean, what percent, I would say like over 60% seems to be stuff that's kind of harder to find older stuff, right? Yes. So uh, Noel Wagner, uh, in addition to being our tastemaker, is also um, our vinyl dealer. And um, he curates our collection. We try and keep um, early and original pressings, VG plus and above in the grading system of vinyl. Uh, what, does that, what does that mean? It means very good plus. Uh, so there'll be uh, impeccable audio quality, um, very minimal wear and tear to the jacket. Uh, if there were any like novelty features, like Parliament used to include a lot of like comic books and things like that. Those are all in- included promotional items. Mm-hmm. Um, so try and keep just like you know where you can start your collection with like the actual collectible record. Um, but yeah, it's it's mostly you know we have everything going back to early 20th century. Um, you know into the Delta Blues. To, you know, obviously we carry Gary Clark Jr. as he is an amazing current blues artist and part owner of Antone's Nightclub. Um, we try and keep, uh, you know, uh, I do a lot of work with Antone's Record Shop uh, with Mike Buck and Eve Monse, and I try and keep some, uh, a very small percentage of reissues of what we consider quintessential albums. 
so like I always have Two Steps from the Blues uh, by Bobby Blue Bland. Uh, mm-hmm. That's just an album everyone needs in their life. Okay. So we always like to be able to provide it. So that's interesting. So uh, Antone's Records, for our audience who may not know, is actually not currently directly associated with Antone's nightclub. They used to be across the street from each other mm-hmm. uh, up in Guadalupe, and uh, now it's just, you know, they're separate entities. But you say you do have a lot of contact with them. So they're, they're a different record store, but you guys are cousins in some way. Exactly. Um, I always actually tell people, same family, different business. Um, like, I think a lot of businesses traditionally have operated in Austin, which is one of the most beautiful, amazing things about not only living in this city, but being a part of it in any aspect in business. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a all for one, one for all, you know, if you win, I'm winning. We all try and support each other, try and keep these businesses that we care about and this culture that we care about alive. Yeah. Not, not looking at it as a zero sum game in the sense of like your gain is not necessarily my loss. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, you know, John from Waterloo, uh, he's been an awesome ally. You know, I, I called up there and been like, hey, I don't know what to do about this. And, you know, people are always very eager to step up and help. And it's it's pretty special. That's really, that's cool. That's actually not uh, universal in my experience. <laughs> not every, yeah, no, it's true. Not every local business scene. Some I, I have seen some where that is the case. Mm-hmm. But not every business scene do you see people who see somebody else's success as helping the community. Mm-hmm. There are some, some more cutthroat areas. You know? Oh, so yeah, it's, definitely. It's good. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, in, in other words, don't take that for granted. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, it's definitely something that's very uh, special and magic about, you know, working in in the realm of businesses that I do in, in the city that I do. Yeah. Now, how did you end up here? So you're not from here originally, right? Uh, well, I'm from Houston. Yeah. Um, I, like most kids in the uh, surrounding counties, you know, grew up coming to Austin for music or for the excitement or, you know, whatever. And then... I just, I loved the city. I loved the pace. Uh, Houston is, is an amazing city, but it's a very fast paced, large. Um, and I liked that Austin was a little, you know, more contained and a little slower. And I moved here in, uh, I think 2011, maybe. Uh, and I, I've lived here off and on and I always come back to it. And then, uh, when I, I graduated college. I, like most people when they graduate, couldn't get a job in my field. And I started being like, okay, I need to go back to bartending, which I had done all through college. And I wanted to uh, be a part of something, uh, not just like a bar, you know, a random place that just is there to sling drinks. Um, And so I started reaching out to places that I thought were really important to Austin. And Antone's was top. I I cold emailed, uh, which I always recommend that people do. Uh, okay. If anyone needs a job, cold call, cold email. All right. Um, it's it's Just it's a move. Grind it out. It's a tactic. Yeah. Um, and I started as a bartender here, and at the time, uh, Big Henry's didn't exist. Um, we just had a little kind of area that uh, had T-shirts, and then one night, 3 a.m., we're locking the door and. The venue manager says, hey, if anyone knows someone who wants a job at a record store, we're opening one. And I, it like knocked people down on <laughs> yeah. the sidewalk. It was like me. <laughs> and uh, I, had, I had wanted to work in a record store, I think, since I had my early teens. Yeah. And uh, so it felt kind of like a little dream come true. Yeah. And then uh, I, uh, I re-interviewed. I already worked here, but I re-interviewed for the job and I got it. And then... Yeah, how, long, how long ago was that? That was... Two, almost three years ago. I was only a bartender here for maybe six months. Okay. And then Big Henry's just grew naturally, like, and uh, the aspects of business just became, you know, like, okay, we need someone to be monitoring this. And uh, I was working part time in the shop and part time at the airport, which was exciting. And uh, I got promoted to first manager and now here i am boom on a podcast doing it <laughs> just podcasting away telling your life story the the bio the biography like who, who's gonna play you in the movie in the biopic um mm, maybe linda cardellini there you go all right you got you got it all picked out <laughs> now i'm sure uh in those three years it's uh not everything has been sunshine and rainbows right so some any small business uh, and you know, all of them that I've ever spoken to have had challenges and difficult moments. What are some of the things that have happened here that, uh, and how did you guys get over it? I think 
Um, I always try and tell people that being attached to a, not only a major music venue in this city, but downtown especially, the landscape of Austin is changing. Um, Antones is very near and dear to the hearts of people, um, you know, and everyone has very strong emotions surrounding Antones. Um, and just always being adaptable. It's really hard to come in every day with the mentality of like, you must adapt, you must adapt. And I had no management experience. So, you know, there was a lot of, you know, I didn't know what these types of documents were or anything like that. And you just, you know, kind of find yourself faking it till you make it, uh, being, you know, humble, uh, asking people for, you know, forgiveness when you really mess things up. And like I said, I've had that wonderful support of, like, I cannot tell you how many times I've called Eve Monse and been like, yeah. Tell me, give me an example. What happened? Uh, just, uh, I have someone standing right in front of me who says they're a vinyl dealer and they're very upset that I won't give them a discount and they have a, some sort of certificate. Uh, it turns out in the state of Texas, there is a, there's a, two different types of permits or certificates um, that allow you to like basically purchase at a wholesale rate mm. uh, from a retail place. And they furnish that or like without tax or something like that. Um, and so she was like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, or uh, it, we're in a very unique position being a part of the venue where or the box office, there's a lot of aspects of business to consider being a part of a music venue. Yeah. No. Um, you know, I mean, pe- people can come in, you know, after they've, you know, been partying and, you know, be shopping and stuff. Uh, being in downtown, uh, there is a lot of, uh, not only like people visiting, but uh, there's a high like transient population. Yeah, you get the random the random aspect of it. Yeah, um, I, I had one guy who liked to come in for a bit, and uh, he he loved uh, like Gladys Knight and a lot of these like really amazing soul soulful singers, and he just wanted to come in and listen to the records and kind of like curl up on the ground and cry. Wow. And, okay, that must have been special. Um, uh, you know, but he was always uh, he was always really thankful. Did he at least buy the record? No, no, no. I know he he. Um, I think he was currently in between living circumstances. Got and, it. Yeah, and um, he, uh, you know, staff would come in like, "Do you need help? Is this guy okay?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, this is just kind of his thing." But yeah, you know, I also kind of would think where can this guy go and it's not like he has a, a turntable or anything like yeah that. exactly yeah. and you know so he can just come in hear music that was really important to him and to kind of have this cathartic experience i mean there's a lot of days where i definitely didn't feel qualified for yeah because you have <laughs> to, to be like a things. therapist a yeah. social worker <laughs> slash vinyl record store yeah manager. and also you know like uh, answer the phones be cheerful behind the desk be the first face yeah i had a lot of experience hosting yeah so you, you always have to be on right that's a thing that's mm-hmm. gotta that's gotta eventually um i don't say take its toll but it's something you have to be aware of that you always have to be on yeah it, it is an aspect and i think uh, most people who are in a hospitality feel the weight of that you know that pressure to always be on and it's just important to have really healthy outlets where you don't have to be on or how to unpack yeah you know things in just like a, a healthy way yeah <laughs> like going and beating up a punching bag or something like that. <laughs> yeah, not leaning too too heavily on your partner. Make sure you're listening. Make sure you maintain perspective. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, I do work at a record store in Austin, Texas, which is yeah, is not the worst gig what, ever. What are the things that you do? Uh, so one of the uh, things that we've been talking to guests a lot is uh, what they do to maintain their mental health, to make sure that they you know they have balance in their lives. What are the things that you that find that you find helpful for for you for that? Uh, I'm, I'm very, very, um, uh, interested in mindfulness practices, uh, particularly, uh, I have suffered from pretty debilitating anxiety in the past. Uh, sometimes it would keep me from even leaving my home for like weeks on end, mm-hmm. which is, you know, you can't, you can't manage somewhere if you can't leave your house. Sure. Um, so that's always been extremely helpful for me, um, just to try to always be super present. Um, and uh, I think this is something you and I were kind of talking about before we, we were on the podcast of just uh, 
try to meet reality where it's at, uh, limit your expectations, keep an open mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, uh, uh, I think, you know, I, I have a wonderful support system in, in my home, you know, with my husband and being able to, you know, just come home and, and leave, leave work where it's at and, you know, have, a home that you know I'm happy in and you know other things I think a lot of people do eat healthy get sleep yeah um, and you're talking about mindfulness you do you meditate as well um I meditate um but I try to just like always like if I'm getting really stressed out um you know rather than try and think of something happy like in in like an escapist kind of way I try to just if I'm really stressed out, just, you know, it can be something as simple as counting bricks. Yeah. It can be just, this is where I'm at, or even swimming around in those feelings. And yeah, focus on the feeling, not the thought. Yeah. The things. And yeah. just be like, this is how I'm feeling and just accept it and, yeah. and kind of ride that wave, man. Um, yeah. I, uh, we, we recently relocated about 35 miles outside of the city. Right. You moved to Lockhart, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we did. And we're, we love it there. Um, but uh, people always, the first thing people always want to talk about is the commute. Just, oh my God, I, oh, how can you do that? But I always say, you know, a little windshield time is not bad. And yeah. I love it's also to not, drive. I mean, the new highway makes it pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just on 130 looking at hay bales. And yeah. there's one. How long does it take? Like 40 minutes? Yeah, about 40 minutes. Okay. But I mean, it's an easy drive. And especially if I don't call anyone, which is my knee jerk to yeah. want to you know, vent to someone, which is always a very healthy thing. But sometimes if I can just sit in those feelings while I'm driving, yeah. listen to some music, just stay present, you know, yeah. that you kind of, by the time you're pulling in your driveway, you're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's chill. Yeah. What I find is, uh, I mean, a lot of us have tendencies to, you know, be more on the artistic side have, I mean, I've struggled with anxiety as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and what I've found is like, the work is never done, meaning like you were, um, there are solutions or things you can do for me. It's like exercise, meditation, playing music, mm-hmm. but it's not like you can just do them once and then you're good. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you always have to do it. You always have to engage journaling, meditation. And if you keep doing them, like, you know, you're good. Yeah. Uh, but you have to remind yourself because you also, I, at least what happens to me is I have these impulses like, oh, I am. To cure that, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's done. Nope, nope, no. comes back and shows up just again. You know, knocks on your door again. So I have a I have a mentor, someone who's very important to me and has been really instrumental in you know introducing me to mindfulness practice and um, things like that. Uh, he always says uh, he has a couple of sayings that I really love, um, but uh, I think the two most useful ones for this conversation are uh, one of them is yesterday's balance is today's dysfunction. Mm. So basically, whatever you thought you had figured out yesterday, you can't just keep reapplying it. Just every day is new, and you just have to, okay, that worked yesterday. Don't be upset if it doesn't work today. Just find out what works today, and then Mm. tomorrow, do it again. Um, And I think something that creates a lot of anxiety uh, in people, uh, I don't know how much you experience the whole, the the should factor. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Oh, yeah, we all do, yeah. And that that thought process, like, really causes you to spiral. Mm -hmm. And whenever he hears me using that kind of verbiage like i should have done this or i should do this he always just is like grace fuck the should and that's that's it like just take that out of your vocabulary and that's it yeah and things are what they are and then if you've made mistakes in the past learn from them and and move and move forward you know yeah like leonard cohen said i was listening to that song anthem it's like you know you know uh ring the bells Mm-hmm. that still can ring you know forget your perfect offering mm-hmm. and just you know soldier on yeah so just keep doing it that's how it goes mm. um let's talk a little bit about like the folks that come into the shop and to into the store so you talked about uh billy gibbons mm-hmm. uh i know uh gary clark jr you posted a picture recently on instagram of, he, of him yeah so uh gary and zapata um come through quite a bit and we see them a lot uh they're you know such such kind people so down to earth um i i have to admit i had been wanting uh you know to get get gary in there for a while like he always comes through and hangs out and looks through records and i'm i'm a bit shy about asking you know like people like that for uh like hey can i you know stop a picture for a social media book yeah yeah. (laughs) because uh i don't know i think especially intones should be like gary's home yeah and i'm sure there's plenty of people who have their hand out 
uh, for something from him. Mm-hmm. And I just want him to be able to like come to the club just chill out. and hang out and just like be in his spot. Like yeah. Anton's is his spot. And so it is difficult for me. Um, I think I had to end up asking our sound engineer, Miles. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, Miles, I know you're hanging out with Gary. Can you ask him? Like, I'm <laughs> lame. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and Gary, of course, was like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. You know, he's a cool dude. Yeah. Um, Billy Gibbons, uh, last year for the Jungle Show, he, I think what he said was it was between Austin and Nashville, and the flight to Austin was cheaper. So him and uh, his partner, I believe her name's Gilligan, hmm. um, they uh, just decided to hang out in Austin for a few days prior to the Jungle Show at Antone's, which yeah. I don't know how many people know, but you know, I think we're on our fourth one. And um, it's uh, Billy Gibbons, Jimmy Vaughn, Sue Foley, Mike Flanagan, and mm-hmm. we do it for two nights, uh, usually the 27th and 28th of December. Yeah. Um, yeah, I brought my mom to it last year. So. It's a great show. Yeah, it's awesome <laughs> show. Uh, but he just wandered in the big Henry's one day out of the blue yeah. and he kind of like didn't leave for a couple of days. I <laughs> just hang out. Yeah. It was awesome. I mean, we were at the point where he was like showing me stuff on his phone and All right. drinking Lone Stars. He, he tried to pay me for Lone Stars and I was like, I just, I might lose my Texas card if I <laughs> charge Billy Gibbons for Lone Stars, man. So <laughs> I racked up a pretty hefty personal Lone Star tab. Love it. Love it. But yeah, yeah, it's, um, you who, know, we, who else draws by here? So. Uh, during South by Southwest, we get a lot of people, um, you know, musicians traveling, visiting, uh, that's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and then I've gotten some repeat people who are like, oh, we know that you have super collectible stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, uh, DJ peanut butter wolf came through, um, two years ago. Uh, the owner of New West Records, they did a showcase here, and he cleaned me out of some records. That was a fun day. Um, but yeah, and I'm sure there's plenty of people who I, I'm not even aware of are yeah. famous. And then uh, we get a lot of tourists, uh, which can be really special. I think that word always makes people cringe a bit. Uh, like, oh, tourists. Tourist. Visitors. Ugh. Yeah, outsiders. And I've I've met some people. Um, I met this uh, this couple and. The guy had a Lola bunny from Space Jam tattooed on his arm. Okay. And I was like, that's pretty tight. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they hung out and they loved the shop. They had a great time at the show. And they were like, hey, I don't know if it's weird, but we live in Denver. If you're ever out there, like, hit us up. We've got a spare room. You can just chill at our spot. Uh, I've had a bunch of people just say that they had such a great time and they would love if, you're, if any of our staff are visiting in their city they would yeah. love to do the same We've got a little collection of business cards from that and i don't know that's kind of magical that's good it's, it's a it's amazing community uh, i took this podcast in many ways it's kind of like that too it brings together lots of different people from different walks of life and and it creates a little bit of the community so mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah tell me more about the work you do outside of here so you were talking about you do uh lighting and uh, what, what are the things you do for for shows outside of uh, your work here so um I, I work at, uh, well, it, it's it's a volunteer-run radio station. It's a 91.7 KOOP. Uh, I'm on a show on Saturdays from 7 to 8 p.m. called The Clear Spot with uh, Brian Carroll. Uh, and it's an eclectic show. Uh, so that's uh, every week a new challenge of like, okay, how am I going to top last week? So, yeah. Uh, it's, we do a lot of vinyl. Uh, and I always, I always on the show say, no, this is the best hour of my week. I hope it's the best hour of yours. That sounds amazing. I got to listen to that. I can't yeah. believe I haven't. Yeah, clear spot. It's yeah. Eight. Um, we're doing a Halloween show this Saturday. All right. <laughs> um, and then uh, I work uh, kind of as, I would say, like an auxiliary um, person with, um, his name's Dustin Braden, and he is uh, what, if you're local or you've been to some festivals, he's done a, his moniker is Lysergic Lights, mm-hmm. and it's all um, live liquid light show kind of mixed av stuff and uh so we've done some really groovy shows in town um you know uh so i do that uh and uh then i do some freelance graphic design work okay Uh, i do a lot of posters for uh co-op i've recently done some for uh the far out Uh, i think it's it's down south congress past 71 now awesome um but yeah, just stuff like that. And my uh, my husband's a musician, and I'm you know 
trying to support him in that journey and you know i'm the the resident graphic designer at the house <laughs> <laughs> that's cool yeah. that's cool so what what's next so what do you guys want to do what's the vision for what uh, what do you want to do with big henry's like you know in the next five years that that's a really good question uh, i'm trying to get us more involved in the community um more out you know doing pop-ups or whatever mm -hmm. um we're trying to really take our south by to a whole new level of just beyond being prepared for a lot of traffic like really crafting an experience yeah um we would like to uh you know we're constantly thinking about how can we have uh this like you know people visit antones and they want to take home merchandise uh how can that be elevated and and i keep using this word intentional but i think that that's really uh, a really valuable keyword in business um you know not just slapping a logo on something that's going to be thrown away because i mean everyone in this building is also very concerned with you know waste factors and all of us have drawers filled with stuff from events that we don't care about and you know so we're always trying to think of something people want to keep hold on to um just feels a little different a little i don't want to say just cooler like yeah. just better you know something you actually don't throw away in a, in a week you know or a year even we have these like uh, and we try and collaborate with local businesses um mm -hmm. doing like kind of crossover type stuff and i know we're really interested in ramping that up awesome so yeah where can people find you if people are interested in learning more about uh about your work and about big henry's what are your social media properties and the address here in Austin for uh, visitors who are coming back? <laughs> so uh, you can find us on, uh, we're on all social media. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Big Henry's, I believe, is our, our thing for everything. It's our Facebook page. Um, we're at Big Henry's on uh, Instagram, at Big Henry's on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I, I post, you know, and I always tell people every aspect of the business that you experience. We have an online store. Um, it's all being run by a very small staff of including me five people. Yeah. You know, so we're hand shipping everything to you. It's not coming from a warehouse. You know, we're, you know, I'll, you know, if we're late sending something to someone, I, you know, Hey, can you throw a couple little goodies in there for them for their patients, <laughs> you know, for the troubles. And, you know, we always try and keep it very personable. Yeah. Um, any emails that come through, I'm, I'm the one answering them. There you go. Um, but, uh, and if you are in our fair city, uh, we are located at the club at 305 East 5th Street. There you go. And what's the origin of the name, Big Henry's? So Big Henry uh, was basically uh, in, introduced Clifford Antone to blues music. Okay. Um, when uh, he worked for Clifford's family's import business in Port Arthur, and he, you know, was you know getting to know Clifford he was very young then um I think maybe not even like 13 and uh he was slipping him 45s and saying go home and listen there to you this go. and you, go. you know he was uh he, he would listen to a radio while he was working and you know it'd be all blues music and that's awesome um I know that him and Clifford remained lifelong friends and uh but we just wanted the place to be this total uh, kind of homage to it's like a tip of the cap Henry. yeah that's no, awesome on. well grace high five thank you so much boom yeah. thank you so much <laughs> for being the uh, guest on uh, small business war stories and i uh, wish you all the best we'll be in touch all right thank all you right, take care small business war stories small businesses are the soul of america this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. <laughs>